You suck at sales, your business isn't growing, and you think that hiring a salesperson is gonna answer all of your problems. Unfortunately, they're not. They're only gonna bring you a new set of problems. Because if you don't do this the right way, you're not only gonna waste a ton of cash, you can actually grow yourself out of business. You need sales. You need sales to grow, you need sales to stay in business, to pay rent, to pay the mortgage, to pay the staff, to pay the manufacturers in China. You have to have money coming in because without constant sales, without profit, you cannot grow. And without growth, you cannot expand, you cannot keep going, you can't get over the little ups and downs and swings that happen in your business. So I understand why you need sales. Everyone who's in business understands why you need sales. But it comes down to the answer to how you're gonna get more sales. What are you going to do to get more sales? And if you suck at sales, you might think, I can't possibly get any better at it. I'm no good at it. I don't like doing it. It's not my skill set. My skill set is something else. So I need someone who is going to come in and lead and do sales. And that logic makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense if you are not good at sales to bring someone else who is good at it. But here's where you run into the problem. Here is where you can blow a lot of cash or you can grow yourself out of business. Bringing in a salesperson is very, very, very expensive. Now it's not only expensive because really great salespeople tend to demand a pretty high compensation. It's expensive because of the entire system the salesperson needs in order to succeed. And so when you say, I suck at sales, I need to bring someone in, you are thinking this. You are thinking, I'm gonna pay them, let's, let's make up some numbers, I'm gonna pay them $60,000 a year to bring me $400,000 in revenue. Awesome, that's now in your mind what you're thinking. I have to pay someone this and I'm gonna get this in return. But if you have not had salespeople in your organization before, if you've not worked with them, if this is a new role in your organization, then you're not even the type of company who can support or handle a salesperson. Most times we think, I'm gonna pay them this $60,000 a year and they're gonna find the leads. They're gonna do the cold calling. They're gonna be responsible for bringing in all the opportunities. They're gonna work the opportunities. They're gonna close the deals. They're gonna onboard the people. That's probably what you're thinking. You suck at sales, so you don't even know what it takes in order to be good at sales. And you think, I'm gonna hire this person and they're gonna come in and they're gonna start selling. But that's not how it works. Everyone has their different skill sets and their different abilities. If you wanted to bring in an assistant to help you with customer service, could that customer service assistant also help you with bookkeeping and with data entry and with marketing and with coaching you and with doing your laundry and cleaning your car and everything else? Are they gonna be good and like doing all of those things? Or is the person who's your assistant who's great at customer service and marketing a slightly different person than the person who's gonna love data entry and accounting and cleaning your car and doing all those other things? Right? It's like a different, it's a different role, it's different skill sets, it's a different mentality, it's a different personality. And so when you bring in your salesperson, the person who's the hunter, the person who's great at cold calling, the person who's good at just making stuff up and figuring it out and bringing people in, is not the same person as the closer and the onboarder and the contract writer and the person who's super diligent. Right? The, the hunter is different than the farmer. It's, the, these are different people. They, they play the game differently. They love different things. And so when you're looking at bringing on a salesperson, you need to figure out, are you bringing in someone who's actually a lead generator? And then you're gonna figure out everything that you have to do to, in order to make the sale? Or are you bringing on someone who's great at working the lead and great at closing the deal and onboarding the lead? but they're not really great at lead generation. Now you need to start a lead generation system, a marketing system to feed the leads to those people. This is why it's so expensive and this is why so many people who bring on a salesperson fail. When I brought on my first salesperson, maybe two or three years in the business, what I didn't know at the time, but what I was getting with this person was someone who came in with a partner mentality. Someone who came in and said, Mark, your business is here. I wanna work with you to get it here. And even though my job is to bring in sales and bring in revenue and bring in leads, I'm gonna help point out the fact that your operations suck. 
and I'm gonna help you fix it. Uh, I'm gonna point out that your marketing isn't great. We need to figure out how to get this fixed. I'm gonna work with you to help you figure out who your target audiences are. And then once we start to get our first deals in, I'm gonna make sure that the customers are happy. I'm gonna make sure that we stay connected. I'm gonna push you to make sure you hire the right team. So when, when I close the deal and I put my name on the line and I say, don't worry customer, Fanta's gonna take care of you. Later, you don't embarrass me. You don't screw up. I'm gonna help you with those things because this person came in with a partner mentality. Now the second hire, the second salesperson I hired, I brought on for nine months. We wanted someone to generate their own leads and work their own leads because we had a system and we would take care of everything else. I had them in for nine months. I spent roughly 70, 75 grand in those nine months with hiring the person and everything else and we got uh, nothing. We got nothing. Now what I didn't know then, and that I know now, is it's the mentality that makes all the difference. So when I'm having conference calls with business owners like you who say, I struggle at sales, I don't know what I'm doing, I need to hire a salesperson, what you do not need is a salesperson. You need someone with a partner mentality to come in with you and help you fix sales. It's a very different thing. You can give them the salesperson title. You can go out and look for a salesperson through a headhunter, but make sure that when you're interviewing them, make sure when you're onboarding them, make sure you're clear to them that I don't need someone to come in and be my salesperson. I need someone to come in and help me build sales. And building sales means branding and marketing and messaging and advertising. It means lead generation and then taking the lead and working the lead. What is the first or the second or the third meeting? What are the proposals like? That is sales. If it's in a more of a retail environment where you're bringing on salespeople, it's being able to interact with the customers, being able to have the proper sales tools so that way you can show spec sheets or show sheets so, or show sheets or show sheets, or show sheets. It's maybe having a catalog. It's maybe bringing on a, a distributor and, and a, building out an entire distribution channel. You want someone to come in and help you build sales. And so if you suck at sales, I think you probably can get better at it. I, I think that you're scared. I think that you're not giving yourself enough credit because if you love your thing, if you know your thing, you're probably the best salesperson, in fact. But let's say that you're too scared to, to, to you know strengthen up and be the person to put yourself out there and do it. Let's say you're too scared to do that. You think you want to go out and hire a different salesperson. Make sure that you look for that partner mentality. Make sure that you're brutally honest in terms of where you are in your business and who you're looking for to help you do it. And then make sure that you're willing to pay really, really well. Make sure that you're willing to not only cover the cost of the salary, but you're able to set them up for success with the materials, with the lead generation, with the marketing, with the distribution, with you know the conferences that you might need to hold if you're now bringing on distribution people, with the customer service that you might need to bring on, you are starting a sales machine. And that sales machine is more than one person. And so because of this, it's where you run the risk of blowing a lot of cash, like I did, wasting all those dollars on something that didn't work. Or you can grow yourself out of business. Your sales machine can start selling, but if you do not have the, the profit margins, if you do not have the structure, if you do not have the ability in order to grow alongside with revenue, then what you're gonna find is you can actually grow yourself out of business, right? Maybe you don't have the cash or the financing to cover this growth, consider it. Maybe you don't have the ability, once you bring in the salesperson to set up all of the stuff before, <laughs> Bring in the salesperson, set up all the stuff before, and then set up all the channel things afterwards. Maybe you need to be a little bit more organic. Maybe you need to be a little bit slower. Maybe you need to do these things. So more than anything, do not bring on someone who's just a salesperson. Get your head out of that thinking. Ask yourself if you can actually get better at sales because if you know your product, if you know your service, if you know what you're doing and you do it better than anyone else, then you can probably get better at sales yourself by putting yourself out there. And then lastly, really look at your numbers. Really have an understanding of what you can afford and bring people on who can help you build this sales machine based off of your pace not theirs, based off of what you can afford, not what they're asking for. So here's the thing, it's not easy. Building this machine is not easy. So don't be surprised when it becomes really hard. Don't be surprised when it takes you six months or nine months to find the right person. Or when you bring on someone and then they bounce out and you bring on someone else. So here's the secret. If you cannot, or simply will not, 
do this yourself, you need to hire someone who has the mentality to be able to come in and build this sales machine for you. The sales machine is more than a single person. I actually am super curious about people's stories when it comes to this, so I would love to know your horror stories and I would love to know what worked for you because we could apply it to many other businesses. And like always, you have to think big, you have to be bold, and you have to say yes. What do you do if you don't fix this right now? That's always the third part. If you don't fix this right now, you're gonna fail.